And I believe the Holy Spirit wants to show you, those of you that are already involved in ministry, to know when the Holy Spirit is not free in an atmosphere. And what to do. And for those of you that you are ministering, to understand that. Because ministry is not what you are doing for God. It is what God is doing through you. And Second Kings chapter 3 The Holy Spirit and I You must be conscious of that as a minister in whatever calling as a believer you must be conscious about that and very importantly the music ministry must be conscious of that the intercessors must be conscious of that you must know when the holy spirit is not teaming up with you not because and it should never be because of you don't let me say not because of you it must never be because of you if it is not because of you and you know the Holy Spirit is not teaming up with you you want to pray for the sick you want to do something but the Holy Spirit is not taking hold with you and we must be aware of that we must be more conscious of him than ourselves if it is not because of you then it must be because of somebody there and most times the Holy Spirit will not have a problem with the people because of the people if the Holy Spirit is not teaming up with you it will have to do with one of the leaders because he always loves his people and you must understand that and that is why and where a real music ministry is very important the intercessors must know that the whole purpose of our praying and preparing for meetings is not to have a good show before the people it is that the Holy Spirit can team up with us and the preparation that we are making for the Holy Spirit to team up with us is everything that will need to do to reduce ourselves you see he must increase i must decrease he cannot increase while you are increasing sometimes it will take fasting to bring you to that place the person that is the holy spirit will work with the Holy Spirit and I it can be in you it can be on you and not go with you and you must know that now second Kings chapter 3 just keep this atmosphere going <clears throat> there's not this is I'm not talking about any point because some of you know you what we wonder is this is it this atmosphere no it's not even the first line of my preparation. That's what the Holy Spirit just wants him to introduce. For those of you that you are ministering, don't ever get into a ministry atmosphere that time. Um, the Holy Spirit is not working. And you are plowing by yourself, struggling, struggling. It is either with you that there is an issue or with somebody that is in the leadership that is an issue. You have to know that. That as great as the Holy Spirit is, we can actually create a restriction on him. He loves the children of God. 
and does not want to hurt us so instead of hurting us he withholds himself now i show you a picture in second kings chapter 3 verse 9 so the king of israel went and the king of judah and the king of edom and they fetched a compass of seven days journey and um, now the king of um, israel was one that asked them to join him to go and fight and they didn't check they didn't ask whether it was in the will of god and there was no water for the host and for the cattle that followed them and they knew they are trapped in the desert and the king of israel said alas that the lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of moab but jehoshaphat said is they are not here a prophet of the lord now this is where and what concerns you as a person if they call you and said an evangelist come and preach we need you they are not asking for your grammar they're asking for your calling and your calling is effective to the degree that the holy spirit is teaming up with you all right now if we don't have a minstrel we must have an intercessor on ground we must have the the, the minister that is um or the person that is holy ghost and i must be able to interpret the holy spirit is not moving here i've been I've, I've, I've found situations like that that you are praying for somebody and you know the holy spirit is not just moving now if it's not with me i know it's with that person you could prepare as a choir to minister and then you find out that the holy spirit is not really flowing with us it's going to be with somebody in the leadership and we shouldn't explain holy ghost absence away we should find out why and we should not continue moses said listen lord you have told me that i have found grace in your sight but you have not told me who is going with me say holy spirit and i good and he said if you will not go with us then don't take us don't carry us from here because how will it be known among the hidden that we are your people except that you are going with us he knew that he knew it wasn't because of his brilliance that all the miracles in egypt happened it was because he was there and not just that he was there he was working i must know that the problem that we have today is that we have a lot of ministers that have been running ministry for years actually that they used to stop working with them five years ago and you can have a, a, a semblance of a ministry the bible talked of some people that they have a form of godliness but they have denied the power thereof must not have that kind of ministry whether you are a young convert or an old christian you must understand that so he said now is there not here a prophet of the lord that we may inquire of the lord by him that's calling them but it may be with your family that they need to have a direction from god The Holy Spirit with us needs us to live ready. There will not be enough time to get ready. You must live ready. You won't have enough time to get ready. You must live ready. When they call, I must be sensitive to that. That's the first thing the Holy Spirit wants me to show you. And then And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. Now the first thing is that Elisha was there, but the king did not bother to discuss with him. You shouldn't be going around with people that don't respect the word of God or the things of God. And if you are in the company of people that don't respect the things of God, 
take charge in the atmos in the spirit yourself because natural leadership can lead you into danger but you must be in constant touch with the holy spirit Because most times when ministers, when ministers come, and I want you to hear this very well. When, 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 when you, if you go to preach somewhere, maybe with the exception of standing in the apostolic office, when you go to preach somewhere, your, first, your focus is to introduce the goodness of God to the people. So your, 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 your spirit is prepared to share the good testimonies but the good testimonies really can get us in danger with God a pastor cannot preach and overlook the issues that God is not overlooking while he's only telling people the good things alone that's why you have a lot of Pentecostal churches today that people are dying. And pastors don't tell the people that people are dying. But there are pastors that say they don't bury in their church. Yeah, their members are dying. There are Pentecostal church members that die and the Orthodox churches are burying them. You see the poster and all that. It's a facade. I hope you follow what I'm saying. You can't produce good doctors if they don't know about sicknesses. And there's no point in them being doctors. I hope you follow what I'm saying. So because it's important that we understand that we find ourselves in a situation God is not working. And it's not me. Who is the person? God should, in, in, should show you that. What if you go to pray for somebody and the Holy Spirit is not taking over with you and say, what happened? These are our own conventions, so I'm going to give you the two sides. Every coin has, a, has two sides. A coin with one side is, a, is not legal tender. And most Christians have one side of the message. That's, not you are, that's why you are not licensed operator or functionary of the kingdom. In fact, when you read the Bible, you will see two conflicting things many times set against each other. And both of them are from God. That is what helps us to walk safely with God. So as I sat there, the Lord had given me two songs that I'm going to sing. But then I just getting ready, I said, let the choir sing. And then, um, Into these chambers be free, Holy Spirit. Now that song was coming up in my spirit. As it was coming up, I was looking at 2 Kings chapter 3. Okay, so this is the first thing that he wants to introduce to you. So you must know how to prepare the atmosphere. They tell us that when Catherine Kuman was ministering, she personally selects the people that sit in front. If you have ever heard that story before. She can actually tell the ushers to move somebody away. So it means the presence of certain people can be a hindrance to the Holy Spirit. And you must know that. I prayed for people that the Holy Spirit said, I have a controversy with that person. And unless that controversy is stopped, there's no show.
Now, if mommy comes up here to minister, and I have a disagreement with her in the spirit, there's going to be a hindrance in the spirit. Your disagreement where you are sitting will not make any difference. You shouldn't preach for a pastor that is disagreeing with you. You have a big problem. Praise God. So, and he said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. Now, in the morning, I was talking about the spirit that you want to carry. And I would look a little bit to explain more of that this evening. I will teach for some time. And then you have another song in the choir. Is that your only song for tonight? Huh? You have another one. Okay, praise God. <laughs> I will teach on the guest because shows up. Say, Holy Spirit, be free with me. Now, pray. Holy Spirit, don't ever let me be the one that will hinder you in the atmosphere. That's a serious prayer. Now, when, when, they, when they talked about Elisha as the one that poured water on the hand of Elijah, and Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. He doesn't know him. Why now does he not say the word of the Lord is with him? Now, if you look at John chapter 3, and then give me 33, 34, 35, John 3. He that has received his testimony has said to his seal that God is true, verse 34. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. Now, that's the principle. He knows you are not the word of the Lord is not going to be with you if the spirit from the Lord is not resting on you. And he knows how that spirit will rest upon a man. That's what we're talking in the morning. You know, I knew that that service is going to hold today. I mean, I knew that was coming to happen. So in I was praying and in the, I was writing things down. And uh, it's good for you to have and to flow together and to operate. You understand? Because I had, uh, I was looking at how will it happen? What if The man of God call every call people forward and then ask me to lay hands on people. I saw that. And there are people that don't qualify. So how do we navigate that area? So I had a plan B. For navigating that. Amen. You know, sometimes a word of the Lord comes and says, um, I want the I want to minister to some people. And people that don't qualify come out. It can actually cause the Holy Spirit to withhold. And many times that withholding takes place in the spirit. Because we have brought the emotions of men 
into the decisions of God. We are more concerned what would people say if I tell them to go back. So I had a plan B. What I was going to do. But Sir, so Holy Spirit, we, we will not need a plan B because if we are hearing from the same source, we will get it right. Write it down. If we are hearing from the same source, we will get it right. We will get it right. And we got it right. Amen? How will we know that the, you have the right spirit on you? You know, because I've seen people that come in, sometimes you find them, in, I, I don't know why it's in the music ministry that they first come in. This person has got the Holy Spirit, but doesn't have our spirit. This person has got gifts, but doesn't have our spirit. And once you, and it's coming for the leadership, because gifts will make a way for you. And bring you before great men. So you must know the people that must come occasionally and go. And must not stay. And you must know the people that shouldn't even come occasionally. They have the Holy Spirit. But it's a spirit of the scatterer that works with them. Dathan, Korah, and Abiram, they were all baptized unto Moses. But there was a disconnection where a wrong spirit came upon them and then they spread it upon people. And they caused 250 people to die. Now, if the choir leader come, if you are praying and say, the song we are going to sing, the person that you chose to sing it, and five minutes to that time, the Holy Spirit moved and said, somebody else should sing it. How are you going to undo that? You know, because I'm saying a number of things together now. One of the great hindrances to God in the kingdom is in Philippians chapter 2. Now, I've dealt with this John 3. Uh -huh. That explained why that man said the Spirit of the Lord is with him. He had served in the structure. Don't be a member without being part of the structure anywhere in the kingdom. So I've dealt with that. And then, um, one of the greatest problems and hindrances to the Holy Spirit, why do you not work with a man, is found in Philippians 2.21. Let's read it. Okay, push it a little bit back to 19. This is Paul talking about Timothy. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you. Now, Timotheus sent by Paul now will be coming as an apostle of Paul. Because the word apostolos is just a sent person. So if your mother sent you to buy bread, you are your mother's apostolos to buy bread. And she must give you money to buy bread. How do we know you are sent? You have the equipment. You are empowered in that sending. If you are not empowered, you are not yet sent. And it can't work with you. It's not that you know how to play the keyboard. We shouldn't just say, bro, 
Anybody in the church here that knows how to play the keyboard? Anybody? Raise your hand. All right, come. You know how to play the keyboard. Ah, good. All right, all of you come. <laughs> you know how to play the keyboard. Now, a good pastor said, What are you doing sitting down in the church? You should join the choir. Now, before we ask them to join the choir, we want to find out number one, do they have the Spirit of God on them? Number two, do they have the Spirit of the house on them? And then, do, you, do they have the spirit of the choir on them? We can put them on the keyboard, and they may have more skill than the person playing it, but bring a spirit of division into their midst. So we can, it's not just the skill now, but can God work with you? And here it says, but I trust not to send Timotheus shortly unto you. So Timotheus is empowered. Are you listening to me? Now listen. How do you know whether you are doing it well? Whether you are following well? Whether you are doing whatever well? Very simple. Everything that I am doing at the headquarters must not be difficult for you to replicate where you are. It's just, it's not a big deal. The Father sent Jesus. It's not, it's not difficult for Jesus to do what I you I'm saying. He sent us. If he didn't have problem with casting out devils, we shouldn't have problem with that casting out devils. If we are having pro problem with casting out devils or getting it done, there's something wrong in between our sending and going. So if you cannot go to preach on a crusade field, you can send your associate. And he should go, not on his own, as your apostolos. Now, you, he's not an apostle of Jesus Christ. He's not the one that Jesus sent. But the one that Jesus sent has sent him. He can now walk in what is on you. But if he, did, he got there and didn't do it, well, something's wrong. When Elijah sent, Elisha sent Gehazi, take my rod and lay it on that. But that was Elijah's, Elisha's apostolos. And he laid that rod and nothing happened. There was the, the rod was powerful. It, it represents Elijah's calling. Elijah was still anointed. But Gehazi had a problem. And what is that problem? You see it here. I want to send Timothy shortly on to, but that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. Verse 20. For I have no man like man minded. Now you cannot carry the spirit until you are like minded. The Bible talks of some people that are otherwise minded. Otherwise minded. I told one of the deacons in one of the branches, is an old deacon. I said, You are my member, but you are not part of the structure. And time has gone. You are my member means you know who I am. But you are not part of the structure. And it is obvious that what is on me that is governing the church is not governing your home. If you are a parent in church and your children are living rebellion to you, ask whether you are in submission to the authority of God. You don't need to struggle about children. There is a con commanding authority. I shared with you the other the authority. I'm a man on, under authority having soldiers under me. Uh, until your children are old enough to have their own things. Once they are in your house, they must be under your authority. But if you are not under authority, you will not know what is causing the disagreement and the argument and the rebelliousness. Now I'm I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with something now. Because many, many, many churches today are in problem. God is, they are baptized in the Holy Ghost. But it's not working because they have the leadership filled with men 
that are not part of the structure of God for that place. Gifted, brilliant, and whatever. And that leads to high service. A son is not trying to impress his father. He's just being real. He's just flowing. He's not conscious of mistakes. He's conscious of fellowship. And you know if God is not working with you, it doesn't matter. If God does not work with longevity, he works with loyalty. 